You hungry? Well, I'm hungry. You like baseball? Well, I love that shit. Want a slice of pizza? Go to New York. You want hot weather? Come to LA. You want to break bread? Call Nick DeToro. Ready, motherfucker? Are you ready? Well, I'm fucking ready. Get ready. Let's rock this motherfucker. Come on, RJ. We got the youth in the house. RJ Kyler. Even though I'm old as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Show them the moves. Show that shit. Yeah, come on, mama. Come on, rock it. That's it. Go ahead, mommy. Woo. This Hold like on. the old black uncle at every cookout. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And nobody can attack. Oh, I know I'm shit. black, so I know this. Yes, I'm half black. black. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> For real, yes. though. Yes, keep it going. Oh, yeah. That's my school. Fucking Wait, 85. Wait, we the same age. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> it's fucking 90s, man. Driving my black Riviera with my velour seats. Hey, baby. How you doing, babe? Come on. Get in the car. <laughs> it's not that easy. Now oh, yeah. it's more like, hey, baby, let me order you an Uber. Oh, you know is that what, what I'm saying? It's like? Let me is get your gram. Like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a Welcome couple to steps. Breaking Bread, bro. Hell yeah, Papa. All right, man. Oh, snap. Hey, My yeah. man in the house, RJ Kyla. Yes. Is that Superstar. how you say your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superstar in the making. Roller skater, too. Roller I'm, skater. I'm trying to be. My God, one of the hot young actors in the business. We got him here right in the house. What was your first acting gig, bro? Uh, my first acting gig was Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, written by Jesse Andrews and uh, directed by Alfonso Gomez Rejon. I'll say it like that. That's the correct way. Really? I, I think now, I'm what was that? It. Was that a series? No, it, that was a, a, a movie. Yeah, an indie, a indie film. How old um, were you? 19. Yeah. 19? I was 19 when, how old when you we now? signed that. 24. 24. So how long you been acting, like, seriously? Um... Pursuing acting, six years, actually working. Since you're like what? Yeah, probably, yeah, like six, five years, actually. Really? Yeah, because we were homeless for a year and a half, and then I booked uh, me and Earl, and then we paid you for the You said you were crib. homeless by yourself or with your family? I with my mom and my papa. Really? Yeah. Wow. And we used the cash that I had from making me and Earl happen to then get us in a nice spot, you know, um... Uh, or get us in a spot, actually. And then we moved from there to another spot after Power Rangers. So, in about, but you're from Florida, I heard, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, but when did you come to Cali? I came to Cali when I was 18. Oh. Um, With your mom and dad? Yeah. And you guys were struggling? Yeah. Shit, man. It was like me and my mom came out first, and we stayed in this rooming house over in North Hollywood. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> and my dad was selling our house back in Jacksonville, so that was a household kind of split mm -hmm. across the country, you know, and, and you right. got my dad, who was the only working working man, and I, I, I love I love my dad so much. I love both my parents, but my pa definitely um, carried a lot of the, the, the weight when it came to how we, how we moved up here. He was holding us together, you know, right. and then my mom, she kept me mentally straight. She is like our glue in our house, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are babies. And so, um, so what made you just come to California? Was it for you for the show business? Well, yeah, I, 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 I got a taste of of what I could do um, acting wise. You know, um, I did a uh, like this program that came to to Jacksonville called CGTV. Well, it was CGTV at the time. Um, CGTV, what is that? Yeah, like Celebrities Actors Camp. You know, it's oh, like really? yeah, and it's held by Adrian Armante, and he takes you know kids and adults also so it's not just a program for kids anymore it used to be um but now he's opened it up to like adults also and so i did that program and then how um, old were you when you did that 16 no or i was at, yeah i was 16 because uh i kept i remember i went back to school and i kept telling my friends i'm gonna be gone now like y'all gotta get I'm, a, I'm i'm about to be dipped i'm about to move you know what i'm saying <laughs> how'd and you then, know you were gonna go I don't know, just the bottom of my nuts. Like, I just felt that <laughs> thing, man. Like, I, I knew that Jacksonville, Florida, like, for me to change Jacksonville, I needed to move out of Jacksonville. You know what I'm saying? The What's two, Jacksonville like? Jacksonville is the shit. 
You know, it's a little crazy. I ain't gonna lie. The you're reason saying, why you're saying it's the shit as it's shit. Or no, no, no. Like, like cool? it's the shit. It's it. Don't test my city type thing. You know, it's like Jacksonville is definitely um, a really big city. We got multiple bridges. You know, uh, multiple sides of town. Uh, and of course, it's a rough city. Like I'm not gonna be like it's all flowers and and you know dandelions. Right. That's that's bullshit. That's totally bullshit. If anybody says, "Oh, Jacksonville's a great place," they either a tourist or they fucking lying. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, in Jacksonville, you just gotta. It's a, a thing of you have to make your respect happen. You know? Right. Like nobody's just gonna give you anything. People in Jacksonville, it's not a, a thing of like. Um. You just get respect because you are somebody. In you gotta earn sense. it. Yeah. You have to, and if you yeah. don't, they will put your ass down. You right. know, like that's just how it is. And so coming from you know my city, and I love my city so much. Like I love going back, just being around my friends and being like away from LA. You know, away mm -hmm. from Hollywood, where you know you have everybody's eyes like this right here. You cannot be a human. Right. No, because you're a piece of entertainment. You're no longer yeah. a human. It's it's so good to step away from that bullshit and then just you know kind of be normal. Right you know to be normal to be yeah. grounded. Yeah, right. You go, I go I go right. back home and it's like it's not. Oh, your RJ is like what up, nigga? And I'm like, <laughs> my boy. You yeah. know, I that that that's them them. Those are my people. You know what I'm saying? When people see uh, RJ, you have this energy. You have this sort of energy. You have this sure. vibe. That's Jacksonville, Florida. You know what I'm saying? I, I carry Jacksonville, Florida. On my face, not just on my back, because I want people to see, you know, exactly what my. Because that's home. Like. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's where you're from. That's your, you know, those are your roots, and it's like, you know, your roots are always gonna be part of you. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like no New York for you. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. like Queens. It's like New York. It's like you know, like I'll always be a kid from Queens. I'll always be a kid from New York, because it's in my heart. No matter how long I've been in this town or whatever I've done or not done in this place, they can't take that away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you like, go, I always got a place to call home. Like right. No, nah, I'm no, I'm not even from here. Y'all having what type of situation? It's almost like being a part of another country, you know. Right. Like Canadians don't care about American problems because they can go back to Canada. Sure. It's like, all right, I'm in L.A., but I know where my home is, you know. And I ain't forget it. I love L.A. Don't get me wrong. Like the people that I've met here, the friends that I've made, the connections, the love, you know, what I'm saying that I've received here is all good. And your life but, has changed here. Yeah, right? changed I mean, crazy. I mean, and I, I thank God for every single bit of that, man. You know. Right. But I did that so that my city could be somewhat better. You know, I didn't. Sure. I didn't come to L.A. for L.A.'s profit and benefit. I don't. That's not me. I came here for Jacksonville, Florida. I'm sure you're not the life. only guy from Jacksonville. I mean, I'm sure there's a few yeah, people. Yeah, oh, yeah, we got, so. Uh, tell me who you got. Right now, YK Osiris, right? He's a young artist from Jacksonville, Florida, and dude took over the game in like a year. Why? When I say took over the game, I mean, took over the game. I got, yeah. yeah. He got his mind on his money. What y'all do? doing? What does he know? do? He's a rapper. He's yeah, a yeah. rapper. Yeah. Well, I would call him an artist because he don't just rap. You know, right. he sings. His, his biggest hits, you know, are, um, like R&B songs, like little dude is like the next prince of R&B right now. You know what I'm saying? And if he going, he gonna be the king of it. Like you know how Jacquees kind of claimed it, mm -hmm. but didn't really get the stamp. It was just like a bunch of people not really willing to defend a, you know, word to be the king of pop or the king of R&B. Cyrus actually gonna be able to have the ground to back that. Like he got the right people behind him, but also he driving and he hungry. Like little homie is hungry as hell. He ain't stopping no time soon. He's got his eye on the prize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 he's he's got his eye on the prize, but right, but not just to get the prize, but to become it. Right. And that's the thing, like a lot of young people, you know, they want a quick, you know, little right. blow up and that's cool because I'll have this type of money. But Cyrus, like, nah, he got so much music right that he could have done dropped, you know, and been that artist that's all in the forefront. But he pays attention to what's kind of needed. And that's the thing that I, I I actually admire about him because like we don't know each other like that, like that. I just know that he's from my city. And if you're from my city, I I'm a push and respect because it's our city together, you know. Sure. And so it, it it's like I definitely pay attention to how he moves, you know what I'm saying, and the music that he he creates and puts out. And I'm just like, yeah. And then we got a little Duval who accidentally took over the entire, you know, music industry. He living his best life and now like the city has rain on it of mm -hmm. that. Oh, it's talent in Jacksonville. Like, there's so many people coming up from Duval right now. Like, Black Boy Chris Duval. Like, he's a, a, a comedian, an Instagram comedian and influencer, right? And it's like, that's Jacksonville, Florida right there. And there's so many other people. 
And I'm just I'm just proud to be one of the ones that's, you know, a part of the little Duval army of, of talent. Yeah, you but know? you're on your way up. You yeah, know, you're yeah, on your way. Yeah. I mean, you're only doing this a short time, and it seems like, you know, you're really making headway yeah, left and right. Yeah. I mean, now you, you've you been in the series already, right? Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it I'm Dying Up Here? Yeah, we did I'm Dying Up Here, um, which was crazy, like, Adam Which Proto, was Showtime. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. Adam Proto is from Jacksonville, Florida, like that character. And so it was almost like a, a little sweet treat that they gave me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So the character in the show yeah, yeah. was from Jacksonville. Yeah, and I was like, whoa. Did you, did you play a comedian? Yeah, yeah. And that was my first time ever doing like stand-up comedy type situation. Like, I love watching stand-up comedy, you know, like. Did route. you do it in the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. I did. Um, I probably did a stand-up piece every episode, if not every other episode. But it was written for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they asked, um, how do you feel about this and that? And I was like, I'm, I'm cool with it, but let me give it a little bit of, ah, you know? Right. And that would just be me, you know, using slang to say certain words or like, but our writers, like, they were amazing. How did you film show. it? Did you film it like in a in a comedy club? Were you like in front of an audience or? Well, they built one. They built it. Um, they built the Goldies, which is the club that we use, right? And it's based off of the comedy store um, because the entire story is based off of Jim Carrey, his rise to who he is now as mm -hmm. a stand-up comedian. Was he involved? Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote, and well, I think he wrote the some of the show. I'm not sure. I don't want to put out information that I don't know for solid you know, terms, but... But, I mean, he had a hand in the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on set a lot um, first season uh, before he started shooting his new show right now, which is so fucking crazy because it's amazing. Is that another Showtime show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that called? Uh, faking it, right? I'm kidding. Oh, kidding. Oh, uh... Are you, are you kidding or something? I don't... Just kidding. Just, just kidding. kidding. Yeah, okay, kidding. just kidding. Yeah. Faking I, it. Oh, I watched Faking It yesterday. That's why it popped in my head. Yeah. But, yeah, Jim has a new show, and I, I seen... I watched, like... The first two episodes of it, and my friend Ginger is in it also, and I was just like, "Holy shit, that is Jim Carrey, back at it again, like he never lost it. Like, mm -hmm. it's the same crazy Jim that we love from me, myself, and Irene, or right. from like Fun with Dick and Jane, or like, you know." What's his energy like? Great. Yeah, it's. And, and, but the thing is, it's not fake great. You no, know no, how it's some real. people. Real it's great. so real, like right. it's it's stuff. No, it's that, genuine. Yeah, so genuine, man. Right. Like some stuff that. But people you can feel, feel his enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. And you he know, seems like a guy that's like supportive. Yeah. Of other people, other yeah. talent. I mean, from from afar, from what I've seen of him, I just, I love the guy, but I like mm -hmm. that he feels like a guy that. No, it is. He, it is. He he likes people. It is. He does not. The thing about Jim Wright. You know how they say, don't judge a book by its cover? Right. The weirder your cover, the more interested Jim is in supporting you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's that lovely of a person. It's kind of, of the brilliance person. of him, right? Exactly. It's like, he knows that his book cover isn't perfect. How many a... episodes did you do? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what did we do, 10 episodes? You did 10? I think it was 10. Was it what? 10? Did you do a second season? Uh, yeah, we did season one, season two. It says um, you did 20. So you did Oh, 20. yeah. Yeah, 10 Were you, uh, 10 were you in all 20? Yeah. Damn. And you worked with my old friend Dave Flabot? Yeah, Dave's the shit. Dave is the shit. Dave is the shit. Yeah, Dave is uh, he's a guy from Boston who wrote a pilot for me years ago that we almost got on the air. Which one? The CW? First or the one, CW, WB. Yeah. yeah. Oh, WB, yeah. yeah. And um, I met him. I was going around first time I ever developed a pilot. And I just met the guy and we hit it off. And he goes, you want to see anything I wrote? I said, no, no. I said, I told the guy at the studio, he's the guy. He goes, how do you know? I said, I know. Because I just met the guy and we just connected as people, yeah, you yeah. know. And he's he's got a good soul. Yeah, know? yeah. And, and he could write. He's a very talented writer. Yeah, I, I was always excited, man. Like to go to table reads, I wouldn't, I didn't, I wouldn't read the script in my email. You know how you get them all. The, right, because you I wanted to discover it. I want to discover that at shit the table. at the table, man. Because yeah. I knew that Dave would always have something that's like, hey, yo, Adam, this is gonna be this. Oh, that's so sweet. Like when the second season, yeah. I got a girlfriend, right? Oh, but yeah. she was nowhere near my age. Yeah. I that's the, that's me. The as WB a, show I did with Dave, I gave him the story. I gave him the characters. And I said, go off and write it. And he fucking nailed it. To this day, I still have that script, Nick. It's a great script. I mean, the audience went wild. It was one of the best tapings they said they had ever had. And for whatever reason, demographics. But he fucking knocked it out of the park. Like sometimes, you know, you'll give a guy an idea, writers, and then you get it back and you go, "That's 
I need some alterations. Yeah, I got to get yeah, involved yeah, yeah. in it. Like, they don't have the voices. They don't have the essence of, like, you, know, you might have a story and say, hey, this is RJ. And then you give it to a guy, and he can execute it yeah. in a way that you go, oh, shit, this guy really yeah, got like, it. Damn, that's actually and, and, RJ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or I mean, but the voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? The tone of it. Yeah. The fucking cadence of it. He nailed it. So um, I, I think I may have went in for that show just early on, and it seemed like an interesting... I didn't quite see all the episodes, but it, uh, was it a great experience? Or what? Oh, it was, was crazy. Was that your first great. time being on a series, or what? My first time being on a uh, uh, a season regular. A I regular, guess you'll say. right? Because yeah, you're a series regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, but they put you through. They put you through a lot, or you just well, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but they definitely showed me like the tough love of stand up comedy. You know, I wanted the rawness of what it would feel like. To so be a when you say comic. they showed you the tough love, or mm -hmm. the, tell me, tell me what that is about. So they don't laugh at bullshit ass jokes like the other stand-up comedians that's on set right they'll let you know either that's funny or it's not because we're trying to create a show you know what i'm saying your feelings and all that extra shit they got to get the fuck on because right. these are people who know what they're talking about they do this like it's like questioning eric griffin on if this is funny right hey eric you're not that that's not i wouldn't do that it's first of all it's not my 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 area of expertise so anybody above me anybody into it i don't give a fuck if you're a, a, a chaperone of a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a listen, you know. Right. So the whole time we would be on set, sometimes Eric would come to me and he would watch a, um, a, a take, take or something, you know, and be like, "Hey, yo, so if you do it like this, no, like last take was real good. It was real good, but let's make it believable." Or he'll, you know, Who's drop Eric? that. Nut. Eric Griffin. He, um, he's a stand-up comedy uh, comedian. Excuse so me. So is he like a consultant? In in the show, or or uh, you mean just in yeah, life? In the show. Oh, in the show, he was almost like my big brother. You know, oh, okay. Ralphie Ralphie was my big brother in the show, practically. Uh, oh, okay. Him and Adam had a lot of, lot of fights and button heads because Ralph is practically the only good black comic in Goldie's that is constantly there, other than oh, Richard Pryor, who okay. come in and, you know. And, and so, what were you, the young guy? Young yeah, kid? young whippersnapper, man. Whipper and snapper, I didn't want to listen. Kind of raw? Yeah, I didn't want to listen to shit. And no? he, he couldn't tell me shit until he showed me shit, you mm -hmm. know. And then we we ended up creating this bond on the TV show. Like I, I till this day, if Ralph and Art and, and Adam could have a show together, I would like, man, I drop everything I'm doing because it, it's just like that camaraderie of not even just being just able to, to be act around like that. that. Yeah, like Eric's <laughs> such a, a fluffy person to be around. Like his spirit is so good. So when it comes to like the critique of your work, you're not taking it to offense, but you also not taking it lightly. You right, know, right. it's like, this is what it is. I'm not trying to shit on you. It's kind of constructive criticism. So fucking, it's like constructive good criticism. But like, what would he say? Like, he wouldn't give you like line readings, but what would he give you to say, hey man, that could be, you know, could be funnier, could be richer. Like, just mm -hmm. give me an it, example. So um, we had a scene that was between me and him. I was downstairs at the cellar and... It's almost like Adam kind of being the... The seller meaning the comedy yeah, club? Yeah, 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 the, okay. the, the, the comedy club seller. And so uh, Adam was being just like, this is my stage, this is me, and the people were backing him. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it is. He's funny as shit. We know him. We like him. But it was disrespect totally to Ralph's character, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that scene, we have a little bit of tussle, right? And in my mind, it was like a playful thing of, uh, oh yeah, I'm just fucking with this older dude, right? But that was also my childishness personally and RJ just being like, oh, okay, this would be that. Because I totally missed what the scene was miss you know, looking for. It's looking for those levels. It's not just all right. funny right now. Right now, he's kind of showing you his heart, you know? Right. Look at that, right? And so Eric came to me, he was like, hey, try this switch to where you just, this one not funny. It's funny to the audience, but right. to you but, but and me, you. we know what's up, you right. know? Right, And I was like, word. Right. And that's what's on TV right now. You know, that's what's in the episode. His note of me taking the situation to, like, not joking with the crowd. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just noticing that they're just a part of it. If this room was asshole empty, right? Right. And it was just us two. But to you, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah, to me, right. it's none of that. And so I didn't even see that as a thing. Because sure. I'm thinking, of course, this is TV. Like, it's supposed right. to be fucking... But you didn't you didn't understand the, yeah. the, the levels of... I didn't of... understand what the root was. I yeah. didn't know why Dave wrote it, you know? That was the, that was yeah, the main that's thing. That's the good writing. Yeah. And it was so good to, to, to have, like, somebody like Eric on set. And also, you know, the, the other actors, of course... 
but Eric was more because we had a lot of scenes together. So he was more like involved in it, you yeah. know? It's like, you know, you get a line and you think, okay, here's the line, but it's like, that's the line, but what's really... Yeah, what are they saying? What is the line about? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then when you start to get that, yeah, you know, then it gets like, then it becomes way deeper than that. Yeah, then then you're acting. Yeah, you know because then you're like, Really, the subtext. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The subtext. Yeah, yeah. And then you're really like, sort of like, embody like, oh fuck, now I'm in it. Yeah. Before yeah. I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm acting. Yeah. Now I'm not just acting. I'm, I'm, I'm going deeper. Yeah. And that's also like a, another thing. Andrew Santino, right? Best ginger fella that I ever, you know. And so Andrew's <laughs> like my, my white black brother. You know what I'm saying? Like I, that is the funniest. He's a redhead, shit. right? He do, yeah. He doesn't even shake my hand like this. He's like, what up, bro? Give me some. I'm like, you such, I know you came out of my mom, all right? You are my brother, I get it, or I came out of your mom. I know one of these ways, you know? And so Andrew has a lot of lines in this show that make, you know, I, I, I guess you can feel, his character has a lot of emotional ups and downs, right? But he has a solid point the entire time. You in know? the show? Yeah, in, in, in the show. What's the and dude's name? Andrew Santino. That's his real name? Yeah. And he's a stand-up comedy uh, comedian. He's a also. real, he's a real comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just had a show are, last week. They are Actually, different kind of people. Weekend. Yeah, true yeah. stand-ups. Yeah, yeah. You and it, it's amazing to see the the if you put like Eric right on stage right beside Andrew, you'll watch two totally different shows and laugh just as much. You right. know what I'm saying? Even though they might dance around the same subjects, you know, but for different reasons. Totally different reasons. You know, it's, it's crazy. Like, Andrew has this Hitler impression, right? It's really fucking funny, but he uses... Hitler it. impression? Yeah. It's really fucking funny. He and does I know Hitler? It, yeah. And he's a ginger, which fucks me up. <laughs> you know, I'm like... <laughs> boy. It's a fucking redheads are different. Yeah, but they it's, really so, are, right? it's so fucking good that you... Most kids nowadays don't even know what Hitler is. Don't know who Hitler right. is. Don't know why Hitler's a bad person. They just know he's a bad what person. What would his spin right? be on Hitler? It's 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 more like uh, I don't know how to fucking do it because it's too right. good. But he he does this thing like he takes current events right and he'll just slip them in there when it, he's saying this Hitler you know situation. So he'll uh, reference if Hitler had. Um, Donald Trump as a fucking president or something. <laughs> yeah. And then he'll totally tell the story from Hitler's point from of view. From Hitler's point of view? It's so fucking funny and it pisses me off because I'm like, you can't help but laugh at it. Yeah, like, but I mean, if you ever if you ever watch footage on Hitler and ever seen the speeches that he gave and he's a fucking brilliant actor, Hitler. Mm -hmm. I mean, the drama, the theater of him yeah. is fucking crazy. Yeah. You, as an actor, you can get like a lot of shit from a guy like that. Yeah. Like, it's, and, and it's and it's and it's crazy because yeah, because he was ah, yeah. oh, just physically, it's fucking it, wild. Uncle John played him on stage. Oh, he played Hitler. He played him in this play called "The Resistible Rise of Arturo Ui." It was all about Hitler's gang. Instead, in the play, instead of them taking over the world like his gang, all these guys were they were like a mafia. They were like bad guys that all worked for Hitler. And then in the play, they take over the produce business in Chicago, the resistible rise of Arturo Ui. But they were ba it, all the characters are based on all Hitler's henchmen and Hitler, which John played. I played like three different roles in the fucking, mm -hmm. I was in this production and Pacino did the play. Yeah. But, but you know, he did this speech at the end. He had like a Hitler mustache and it was fucking brilliant. I mean, that's, you know, all, that, that's how. When you see that shit, I yeah. mean, that's, that's like, that's, you know, you can't. The real stuff is insane. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why, like, you know, if you can do a spin on it, it's whatever. it's almost like um uh the the worst the worst people in history, right, all had to put on a face and a facade, you know what I'm saying, to sure. become that and sure. to continue to do what they did. Like um Zach Efron just did a movie on Netflix where he um He's Ted Bundy. Yeah, where he's Ted Bundy. And I'm like watching it like Ted was a great fucking actor. Like he the was real a Ted great, Bundy. Yeah, the real Ted yeah. Bundy. I heard he was handsome. Like he, he was such oh, an amazing. Had to be yeah, a great. He had to be charismatic. Yeah. to lure all these women, yeah. girls, right? But also hold his ground for this long that oh, I'm innocent, and then have people actually contemplating, oh, he might be innocent. All of these facts wow. show, you know, like yeah. that, that trial should have never even been that long, you know? Right. That, that should have been a thing of, oh, we have evidence right here. Right, he's guilty. You know, we, we know. 
just stop wasting. And yeah, sometimes all people time. don't want to believe. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to believe, even when the evidence is right there. You know, he it's took like, you. It's like, That's you what know, they're saying. oh no, he can't like OJ. He's like OJ could. He was the Hertz guy <laughs> running through the airport. How the fuck could OJ cut up two people? <laughs> Well, he did, motherfucker. He did. And he said it was you know somebody. I mean? He you was know. like, and that's when yeah, but like, Jimmy like, handed you know, me the knife. You ever see that interview where it was like, well, I could have done it? Yeah. Like, no, you not you could have. You did it. <laughs> you way, fucking did it. Wasn't it somebody else you know, that he was saying it, did it? If it don't fit, you must have quit. It yeah. wasn't that. That's yeah. fucking bullshit. That's theater. No, for real, though. You know, like, I could have. I don't know. I blacked out. I mean, I mean, I could have. The knife was there. I don't it know. The guy showed up. I don't know. could have been me. You know, I it's, like, been the one it's like Eddie Murphy. You ever seen that guy? Like Eddie Murphy, man, you see his old fucking stand-up is brilliant. And he was like talking about the guy running down the hallway and with his dick out and all this shit. And his wife caught him, his girlfriend caught him. He was like, you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And he goes, then you flip it. All right, all right, all right, all right. We did. I fucked her. I fucked. We fucked. But I make love to you. He goes, <laughs> and he was like, like, you know, fucking running down. The guy's running down. I'm not gonna say the word. He's running down there with a hard on, rock hard on, talking about, no, 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 what's it be? What's it be? What's it be? But then you flip it. Because mm -hmm. then you know you're against the wall and you're like, all yeah. right, all right, all right. You got me, you got me, you got me, but I make love to you. And Ted said the right. same thing. I just, right, I fucked that bitch. You know Ted's what I mean? a yeah. hacksaw, but I ain't kill you though. Right, right, right. Yeah. Hacksaw, know? but I didn't kill you. Yeah, yeah, I didn't kill you though. <laughs> what the fuck you mad at? <laughs> That's all it is, baby. Fucking brilliant actor. Yeah. Right? Brilliant actor, man. It's like when Eddie Murphy did that. That's why when you see great standards, we're talking about that today. It's like, you know, Chris Rock, we're talking about, uh, well, whatever the word, you know, some certain things that we're talking about, Chris Rock said. It's just funny because you know it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's not about the word. It's how you say the word. You mm -hmm. know, it's how things are used today. You know, I mean, because everybody's like so, you know, politically correct. It's like, you know, don't say this, don't say that. You know, it was like, well, but how did I say it? We For were real, having an like, argument. And, and can I, I be politi shit. politically correct when me and my wife are arguing? Or you and your girl, you know, I'm like, how are you going to think? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. They <laughs> say shit to, to you like, I hate out. your fucking guts. <laughs> oh, you hate me? Well, I hate you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the same thing. Right. It's, um, I, I don't when it's like it's over, the... you go. I don't really hate her, you yeah, know. What I mean? like, my bad. like I'm sorry, you know, like you called me a fucking pussy. Yeah. I'm not actually a pussy, you know, but you call me that, you know, and yeah. I'm like, you know, you feel but then you know, a decent person has remorse. It's the people that have no remorse, you know, people like they can walk around like like you Simon Cow. Yeah. You know, Simon, Simon Cow. Simon Cow don't give a fuck. Yeah. That's he, why he's oh, the right. perfect well, that's why American he's a killer. idol judge. You that's know? why he's a killer. Yeah, like it, 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 He can it's sleep a thing. at night, right? But that's the thing. He people, can sleep like a baby. so pissed off now. Like, if you're right? upset, mm -hmm. does it affect you when you go to sleep? I a mean, like, bit. no, it depends, like, how upset. Like, oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, say yeah. you're upset, or, you know, like, if you have a girlfriend, wife, or something, and you have a fight, and you're like, you know, you go to bed, you feel fucked up. You yeah. don't get a good enough sleep because, you know, you're upset. You shit on but your there's heart, some yeah. people that are, like, unconscious, and they don't give a fuck. They mm -hmm. sleep like a baby. Big baby. Yeah. Because With they, bottles and shit. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, no, it's a it's a lack of like... A lack of empathy. Yeah. A lack of sensitivity. A lack of just, you know, being... Um, you know, I don't know. But some people are, you know, remorseful. Some people are guilt-ridden. But also nowadays, I mean, you know, the I world... know I'm, I'm Catholic, so you're Catholic guilt. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of guilt. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just... You feel guilty because of whatever. It's a you just, Yeah. You know what I mean? But there are some people, they're like, nope, that don't bother me. I can go take a shit right now. I go sleep all night. And I'm like, you know, yeah, that that's fucking weird, you know? Yeah, I, I think, like, some people are just... I don't even know how we got here. I think it was Hitler. Because it's real shit. <laughs> fucking Hitler. Uh, <laughs> fucking Hitler brought out all this comedy. No, nah, I, I think, like, everybody can, can oh. handle the truth, right? But some people need a little fluffer. It's like... He can't handle the truth. Like yeah, Pacino, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Like, everybody can handle the truth, yeah. but how do they take the truth? And some people, like, it's a little fucked up, but... Before you ask for the truth, make sure that your mental capacity can handle it, you know? It's like, do you yeah. really want to know the truth about this situation? Because if I'm honest and I love you, I'm going to let you know. Like, hey, do you think this makes me look fat? Hell yes. You look huge. But that's okay because you got a dress in the closet that makes you look so skinny. <laughs> and it's that, that type of, like, honesty that you can't share with a lot of people nowadays because it's I'm going to tell you what you got. Mm -hmm. You're smart. Yeah, I'm a, did you graduate high school? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You didn't go to college, right? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> not that it's nothing against college. It's nothing against college. No, I, I had scholarships to go to college to be you a did? teacher. Yeah. I went to this program called Black Male Explorers, right? I went from the sixth grade all the way up to my 12th grade year. And every year that you go, they put money behind you to go to college to be a teacher, right? And so I could have did that shit easily. But that was the easy route, you know what I'm saying? That was the shit that I could get in a lot of trouble with. Like college, you know what I'm saying? All right, cool. I know two things are guaranteed. Debt and a whole bunch of like weird sex, you know, sexual activities that I'm probably going to regret. You know what I'm saying? All right, I don't even got time for all that shit. I actually want to build something, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, I got a vision, and college is not a part of that vision. And people sometimes get scared when they don't go to school. And I'm like, okay, cool. You didn't go get a whole bunch of books for $200,000 in debt. It's all right. Do you still have a plan? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like, that's what's important. That's what's important. I mean, I understand that having that stamp of, oh, I have this degree. That's beautiful. So many of my friends got multi-degrees. I'm so like, holy, I love it, right? But don't blame the next person or bash or look down on the next person because they didn't go to college. And, you know, because in my, in my that's eyes, right. fuck college. That, right. It don't do nothing No, but you're for not me, knocking you know? it. Yeah, I'm not knocking it. You're just it. saying, hey, yeah. it wasn't my path. Yeah, it was. It's not it my path. It's not my journey. But nowadays, you got people that get real sensitive when your path ain't their path. And it's like, hey, when did my path have to be your path for me to be a human being? You that's know what exactly I'm saying? That's exactly right. Like, when did that become a thing? Did right. you actually get to call yourself a human sure. being? You sure. know, like, you know, it's like I, my brother, he went to college, then he had struggled, he went to grad school, he came out, Yale school. Me, I was a fucking doorman, blah, blah, blah. I got sidetracked, but I learned a lot about people, a lot about life. I didn't finish college two in a year. I was, it wasn't for me. I was running with kids in tights. I said, this shit ain't for me. But later on, I've, I found myself in my late 20s, and then I followed and went after my dream. But, I, you know, I learned a lot about life, too. Yeah. And you can learn. There's a lot of ways you're going to. And then I did. I learned on the job, you know, probably like what you're doing. You're learning on the job. You're learning on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, you seem to be like a guy that's a sponge, that you got your eyes open, you got your head open, you know, you got your notebook out. You're learning, you know, yeah, like, I mean, even yeah. like the experiences you're telling me with, with Dave and these comedians, I mean, you, you went to school there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you learned a lot. Yeah, so you I, come out of that job going. I'm in college, right? right the fuck you're now. In college. It's called you Life are. University, yeah. L-I-F-E. And, and, and to your point, it's like a lot of kids, like our age, my age, whatever, like they just want a, a, pl they want a, a blueprint of how to do things. Yeah. And it's like. Just because you don't like, you don't want to go to college, as long as you have a plan, a plan and you have an idea like, of what you want to do. Like for me, I'm in college, but I don't like college. So I don't know if I'm going to finish. I may, I may not. But I already have an idea and a plan of like what I want to do. And we're doing that as long. So like that's like the nine to five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it, to, to me, it's like whatever. But yeah, I, I just don't like when, when people feel bad because they not in college or they feel stuck or this and that. And it's like, well, I'm supposed to be in college, right? It's like, no, what do your heart say? Are you some, do you want to be a, okay, cool. You know you don't need college for that, right? All you need is two dime bags and a really quiet person that knows how to move them across town. Like, <laughs> that's all you need to do. <laughs> you know? I love this like, guy. Everybody just, you know, it's not one way to get to success. It's right. not one you're way not to get to- You're not a loser because you didn't go to college. Yeah, you're not. There's some like, people that went to grammar school and they became the fucking, you know, whatever, yeah. president of the United States. Look, Jody High Roller. I'm sorry, but Riff Raff, right? Riff Raff didn't even finish school, right? Who's Riff Raff? Riff Raff is a, uh, yeah, he's a rapper, right? And he's one of the richest individuals that you'll see right now. Success, like, personally, like, he's happy. Mm -hmm. And he didn't go to college. He didn't go to school like we went to school. We're not knocking education. Yeah, we not, and we're not we're knocking education. That's not everybody's, everybody's path. path. Like, it's different. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of people being judged because they don't take somebody else's path of getting to success or getting to happiness, you know? It's like... My story isn't your story because I didn't come on earth with you. In my prayer closet, it's just me and God and this weird-ass brain up here. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. So whatever way that my path says happiness will be reached, as long as I'm not hurting the person next to me, I'm good. Like, I don't need your, your, you know, your success story to be mine. That's what causes stuff to be weird. And, that's, know? A, and like, that's a problem with college today. Like a lot of, I remember when I came back at Thanksgiving or winter break, whatever it was, and everyone was talking about their experiences. It was kind of like, if you, I kind of saw dynamics that people were like, well, well, I'm kind of doing this. And it's like, mm, and everyone's kind of like judging each other what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like everybody's on a different path. Maybe someone doesn't finish college. Maybe they don't have the opportunity to go to college. Maybe you 
have to go to college for what you have to do. But like I, yeah. for some people, we don't have to do that. And, At all. and if you don't want to do it, then don't waste your time doing something that you don't love. Like I don't love being in a classroom. I fucking hate it. But you know that what you're going towards is like... It's bigger than what yeah, this yeah, is yeah, at yeah. the moment. Yeah. So it's like, to me, it's just like, it's what I have to do at the moment. But, mm -hmm. you know, some people don't understand that. Some people have to be there to like get where they need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have... Mm, no, technically not. But is it grounding me? Sure. Yeah. It's making me, you know, do other things. But I, I totally agree with what you're saying. There's just... There's, too much, there's a big judgmental factor with it that I don't like. Mm -hmm. And it's just... You know, oh, I went here. Yeah. Oh, really? You went there. It's like it's, oh, bu yeah. it's bullshit. And 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 the thing is, I, I what confuses me, right? So the curriculum books from EWC, right? That's Edwards Waters College in Jacksonville, Florida. They're the exact same books that are at UCLA. Same curriculum. You know right. what I'm saying? They. They teach without, the same without, thing. Without the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Without that title. It just like, excels at they, different yeah, places. It just sells it sure, differently. So sure. even though the, the title of the book might be different or, um, oh, yeah, the color might be different, the page, the... The, the, the same content. It's the same exact well, content. He's going to two-year school. He said it's way harder than the four-year school he was going to in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Because they try to cram the information, yeah. you know, and so they... They're like, oh, we need to teach you this, that, and that. And so it's so much information. And it's like, all right, cool. If I can learn it, that learning curve, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, it ain't for everybody. Yeah. And education is good. Some education I think is you need to have. But not everybody's going to finish college. Not everybody's going to go to grad school. Now, some people are professional students, and they go to school for years and years and years. I don't knock it. It's great knowledge. Now, a lot of people come out, and you're like, in the game of life, they're fucking morons. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know so. In the of game of life, you know, they're idiots. Mm -hmm. You know? I learned in the street, you know, a lot. When I was a doorman, I learned. I didn't I got my college education out. I learned a lot about people. So I applied it when I started acting. Mm -hmm. Because I was I, I watched people. So I used all that shit. It's just like you're using whatever you have in you and then trying to learn on the fly. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know? It, it is. You, like, it's even another thing, too. It's just, like, everybody has, like, different, like, ways of learning, and they have different ways of being social and that kind of thing. It's like, like, personally, for me, socially, I can I have a hard time talking to people my own age unless they're my close friends. But, like, a random adults, whatever, that are way older, like, no problem yeah, communicating. Yeah, say what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, just yeah. weird. Like, everyone has different ways of doing things, and everyone has different ways of learning. And some people may have to learn in a classroom. Some people learn on the job. Yeah, yeah, And some yeah. people want, they need to be pushed in there, like, well, I need this, I need that. And it's like, It's just like, know. do we, when do we get to the time where it's like, I would rather celebrate you than question you. Yeah, I don't or get judge that, you. you know, like, I love seeing my friends. I, I had three friends, and since I've been in L.A., right, that dropped out of college. When they were going to college, we celebrated. You know what I'm saying? When they dropped out, we celebrated even harder. You know, not because I was like, oh, fuck school. It's just like, no, now you have a plan that belongs to you and it's yours. We know that you're going to reach happy. Like, they're the happiest three people that I met. There's two dudes and a girl, right? They so happy right now, yeah. you know? And they didn't even fit. They wasted a lot of money. They was in debt, you know what I'm saying, with this and that. But then their plan, you know, it was like not being afraid to go after a plan. I understand that your parents may say this or life may paint it this way. But it just showed that that pathway weren't theirs, right? But then I also have two siblings. You know, they're twins, but they're friends of mine that started this acting camp with me that I went through with Adrian. And they're both in law school, right? They've been in law school since they graduated high school. Mm -hmm. And they're so effing happy. Like, they're happy as hell because this strategic thing is about to blow up and make them into what they dream is, right? right, right. And so it's like, it shows every single day that people's path is going to be different. different. But yeah. it's like... If you're a real friend or you're a real person, right, you don't want to see the detriment of another person no. because they didn't take your own ways. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. I, I, I feel like people sometimes get offended when our way doesn't work for others. And I, I, I say our because I've been, you know, in that ignorant state of like, oh, damn, well, why wouldn't you do it this way? I, and then they show me an entirely different way and I apologize because it's like, I'm sorry. I was ignorant as fuck to the way that you could do that. You right. I'm... I'm going to do it like that from now on. Right. Like, you know, it, it's, it's that thing. It's almost like brushing your teeth. I used to think I brushed my teeth the correct way. Front, 
back, back, get did your you? tongue, right? Did you brush it? No, right? it was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It was fucked up. And then my god, I never brushed yeah. it right. Then That's my god mama, problems. My god mama you told me. You got an electric toothbrush now? Yeah, I got an electric toothbrush. I got but the whole, like, right? the swift down. I get uh, everything. I get jealous. When I see people brushing it the right way, I'm like, Fuck, man, how come I never mastered that? I feel like a caveman. Yeah. Certain things in my life I never got right. <laughs> my god, mama. I don't talking. know, like my parents, why didn't they teach me how to brush my You're teeth? You're barefoot right? right now like a caveman. How come they didn't teach me how to floss my teeth right? I had problems with my teeth, my gum my whole life. But I overcame it. So I'm still a caveman with it. I'm still a work in progress. That's me I mean, my flossing. wife's got a cousin. The guy's been haven't been to a dentist in 30 years. He just went and now his teeth are falling out. I'm like, motherfucker, you haven't gone in 30 years. You're lucky not every tooth is coming out of your mouth. You know? And this is a true story. And I'm like, I thought I had problems. Yeah. You know, I don't think I could do 30 years with no dentist. Like, well, most of the, like, this guy's like... 30 years, no dentist, no doctor. Six million dollar man. Holy shit. You know Unbelievable. Uncle Gabe. And the, you know Uncle the Gabe. The dude in my house. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 30 years he hasn't been to a dentist. Finally. He had teeth chipped and whatever, decay and... He said, I wanted to Fuck, see and how I go, long. you got to go to the dentist. He, he he basically just waits till, like, he prolongs things. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. like, like, I wait, like, but this guy waits till, like, it's almost oh, too late. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's um, like, okay, sir. All right, my you bad. know, you didn't go for a checkup, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like I had to go do my colonoscopy. I had to check my ass because, you know, for years and years and years, I've had problems with my... my like, my, imagine if you didn't go. Yeah, I had to go <laughs> because people, be I'm like, I need to have my IBS. I have this, I have that. Everybody's got stomach issues. I got to check something just to see if, you know, let them look up there. Yeah, Rappaport told you you had yeah, it. Yeah, Michael Rappaport like, told me. Like, get it out of the way. Yeah, I got to go get it. It wasn't no way. big deal. But this guy, you know, like, what are you afraid of? You ain't, you ain't invincible. You're human. Mm -hmm. Go to a fucking dentist. Now he's like, well, I just figure I'll pull out the two back teeth. And I'm like, they told you you need four teeth. Not two, four. But I got to see what I can afford. And I'm like... Dude, you want to have no teeth in your mouth? I know a guy like that. They yanked out every tooth in his mouth. I know a lady like that. She just do a lot yeah. of cocaine and crack. You know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> a whole lot of gum. Ain't no fucking, you know, a dentist is worse than a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know they commit suicide more than doctors? You know why? Bruh. Do you know why? I done thought about killing no, myself no, no. smelling stain people. No, no, no. If you were a dentist... Would you want to be a dentist or a doctor? Neither. I know, but if you had a choice. Um, Someone put a gun to your head and said, you got to be a dentist or a doctor. <laughs> Look what a dentist does. Yeah, I'd probably be a doctor. Yeah, I'd be a doctor. Teeth out of your mouth. That's fucked up. Bro, have you smelled halitosis? It's a serious thing. Yeah, I know that. It's uh, a serious thing. It is I, rough. And, 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 I and we've all had bad breath. You know, you got to yeah. keep an eye on that shit. Yeah. It's I like, do too. It's like, I didn't know how to explain to my homie, like, God That's damn. why you gotta get that fucking chewing gum always up ready. Because yeah. you don't know, you know, you're like, oh, shit, my breath stinks right now. <laughs> I hate that when you go like this. Ah. Oh, shit. But you can taste ass on your tongue. Like, if your <laughs> breath stinks, you know that your breath I'm so sick. Let's have a moment of real, like, oh, my God. listen, if your breath stinks and you say that you don't know your breath, you're lying. No, you're okay? lying. You're you lying. know when it stinks. You know your breath stinks. Well, a lot of times it's coming from your stomach. It's acid. But that's okay. Put it's a right. piece of gum in that Get bitch. That Don't fucking talk tic -tac. close to people. You know, and plus, you know, if you're going to make out with some chick, you better have some gum handy. Give me mm -hmm. that sucker. Just speaking of some Tic Tac right now. I'm, you never know. I feel like acting and like... Hey, bro. Acting definitely... Uh, <laughs> acting definitely showed me how many people do not use dental no. hygiene. And if you're going to do a kissing scene, Boy. you know you got to load up right away. You know, I had to do one or two of those on NYPD Blue years ago, and I... I don't even remember what it tasted like or felt like. It was just weird. Mm -hmm. I was like, do I got to kiss her? And they were like, yeah. I go, can I kiss her stomach? No. Oh, I was trying face. to get out of it. i tell you a funny story. The second kissing scene I ever did on NYP, we used to always watch the show, me and my wife. And that night, I think she thought I had like a crush on this little Dominican Filipino girl. And, and we did a kissing scene. I didn't tell my wife. All the guys in the show were like, you didn't tell her? You got to prepare her for it. I was like, I'm trying to get out of it. Then that night, I said, let's go to the movies. <laughs> and she was like, well, why? Why? I go, I don't know. And then I, and I, I guess got busted. And I was like, she saw the scene. She got so mad. Yes. I couldn't talk my way out of it. 
That's why years later, I did this movie, The Hillside Strangler, where some chick was sitting on me, lap dance, nude. I prepared her. Mm. I said, get ready. Hey, look. This is bad. I'm playing a serial killer. This girl had her titties in my face and all that, and I was like, there was nothing I could do. Nothing I could. She wanted to walk out during the movie, and I said, don't do that. It's embarrassing. It's a movie. I played a killer. These that were serial killers. You know, and, and the, the first scene, the girl takes her clothes off. She's nude, giving me a lap dance. And I said to the director, I said, what do you want me to do? And he goes, well, yeah, you got to play. You got to play with her. It's in the dialogue, too. I said, I know, but I mean, this is fucking hairy. I've never done a scene like this. This girl did porno in the valley. She was a porno actress. So it was nothing to her. To her it was like legitimate acting. Mm -hmm. I got into it, but I got into it in the character, you know, but it was a little sick. Shout out to strip club, man. Yeah. But anyway, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> I've, I've been through that that situation. Not um, easy acting. I remember kissing, I went to kissing love scenes. I haven't done a love scene. Well, so. What was your situation, RJ? Oh no, wait, which one? I've had a few in Hollywood, <laughs> but the the first one, the first one uh, that I ever dealt with, I was with a young lady for two years. Is this an acting uh, scene? Yeah, this is acting. Yeah, yeah. In what? Um, Television, movies? No, it was just a play. So Adrian, oh, a play. Adrian yeah, Adrian put the oh, put. Yeah. Adrian put a showcase together for his uh, students that are in the program. Was right? it back in Florida? No, this is here. Here. Yeah. And so he gave this young lady a scene, like he gives everybody a choice to pick whatever scene. And this young lady wrote in, like there was no kisses in this whole scene. She wrote in two kisses at the beginning and then this whole like telenovela shit, like leave, don't go, leave, don't go, like type. In the, right? in the script? Yeah, in the script. Yeah. Like, so when I read it, I gave it back to Adrian, and I was like, "Where the fuck did these extra kisses from? Like, where did they?" Well, what kind of kisses were they? It was no, like it was like mm, good full shit. On, like yeah, full on. Yeah, I got juicy black lips. You know what I'm saying? She was she a little white do. girl from. Oh you my! Know, you must have devoured her. Not devoured. She was just in love. You know what I'm saying? She yeah. was. What these are say? Listen. Well, she wanted that. Thing. All right. Oh, well, you shit. ain't got none. You love some. Yeah. But like, that wasn't my that wasn't my <laughs> my vibe. You know. And oh, so. Shit. I tell, I tell uh, the, the young lady that I was uh, in a relationship with at the time, right? I tell her, right? She buys a ticket and sits exactly front. When I say front row, as I'm sitting in the scene, I can literally look at her and say, hey, what's up? Give me a kiss. Who, your girlfriend? Yes, bro. Oh, no. Like, why would you do that to yourself? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even like it. I don't even like the fact that you're here and you have to see this sure. between me and another woman. You know what I'm saying? That's out of respect for me, but I also know my job. So this was one that you could have totally avoided. But it's like, I have to be there to make sure it's nothing but your job. And it's like, who's this? Your girl? Yeah, like that, that's the energy. Like, why would you, I told her in order to be like, hey, yo. You prepared her, like. Prepared her. And that didn't make no motherfucking like help. Like, she just showed up and made me feel awkward. But I'm going to still do my job. I'm a professional at what I do. So right? what happened? Did you make out with her? Uh, duh. Yeah. Change the little girl life. Okay, really? but it was like when we talked about she it, was I was just love, like, huh? I was just like, what happened? Like, you good? She was like, yeah, I'm good. Who it was actually a really, yeah, she was like, it was a really great scene, this and that, and I would do. We're not together no more, as you see, right? But like, it, it was it was cool because I seen how like, okay, she can catch that and this and that. But then other ones down the what? It's not easy. I mean, it's like, not you know, easy. like, look, like, if you can't know, handle, but dating, that's what you do. You're an yeah. actor. Like if my you wife, you know. We were both jealous, both of us, but if it was her, you know, being an actor, maybe I would feel different, but she's not an actress. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not confronted with, you know, oh, some guy's going to be making out with her, but I'm sure, like, I don't think I'd want to watch it. Yeah, at all. It's like, I, I would rather. Because we're weaker than women. Yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah, well, know. hold up. In some ways. Some ways. I'm pretty, I'm yeah. pretty motherfucking yeah, stronger than every woman that, that's you good. know. That's I, good. But, but it's that's not what, easy. Yeah. It's, it's not, not easy. It's not, because yeah. it's like... I mean, you see some of those full-blown love scenes and like, oh, shit, I wonder how they... Mm -hmm. Nobody's on set, closed set, whatever. It's got to be... It's just it's just the actors and, like, the cameraman pretty yeah, much, right? Yeah, like I did, a, I did a crazy scene with a woman in this movie with Ving Rhames. It was supposed to be, like, a, a love rape scene because I find out she cheated on me with Ving Rhames and I was supposed to make love to her but then, like, fuck her up during the love scene. So I, and they were here, they were there, the kids, I, I told everybody, get away, and then we cleared the set, and I was like, it was a dist distorted scene, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to be that way, so I wanted it to be ugly, because I didn't want it to be like, oh, and the girl was a beautiful girl, you know, but 
It just, it was an awkward scene and it came out that way. That's just awkward that like, she'd want to be there. Like, yeah, you know, like, you, don't like, do that to me. Like, you, I, yeah. I want to see, I don't want that energy. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not, and, and the thing is, some, some people find it, um, and, and, and being insecure is something that each and every human being has. Oh, we all have that. Each and every one of us, we right? We all have that. But it's a thing of learning how to grip that and notice what is malicious and what's not. Right. You know, and, and what's it's like, professional. Yeah, and what's professional and, if this and what's is your not. Profession. This is how you make your living with your face, with your talent, and sometimes, unfortunately, you may have to do something. It ain't porn. No, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know if people. You're are, not doing porn. Yeah, there's no penetration no on penetration. Hollywood sets. Right. Most that you're gonna penetrate is a tongue and a mouth, but that's, that's only it. if they brush their it's teeth intimate. and both of them. Make sure they brush their teeth. Right. That's all right. But That's after okay. that, they call cut, and That's then right. their husbands or wives say, hey, good job, babe. Right. Right on side of camera. Yeah. Like, actors, I don't, I I don't get it. I had that hillside strangle. I choked mm -hmm. out some bitches. I killed them. Put play, and then cut. I was, you okay, honey? You Literally. Know? That's how I would. Yeah. Man, and I then, love being And then I jumped right into, like, you know, putting a plastic bag and putting Windex into their fucking neck. And then I was like, after I choked their lungs out, I was like, you all right, baby? <laughs> you good? Yeah. And I was in the character. Mm -hmm. It was a dark place. Uh, I don't want to do it again. Imagine yeah. Judd Apatow, like he, he, his wife is Leslie Mann. He's directing her, and she's making out she's and making having sex scenes with people. Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. has the director doing that's that. Hard. Yeah. That's that's, his wife. that's even harder. And that, I don't know see, if I could do that. That's strength right there. But that know? is that's strength. strength. That's strength. That's trust that's too. That's strong. strength and trust. That's trust and. Yeah. And that's power. It, it, <laughs> it, it was even weird when we 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 produced a pilot like in the in last winter and. The there was a one kissing scene and both uh, girl and boy had boyfriends and girlfriend and they were there on set like watching. I'm like, why would you do that? You like, what are you stupid? there to watch for? Right, right. This is weird. And, and I'm telling you, I made out on camera a few times. It was weird. I don't even remember it. Mm -hmm. It was awkward. It was like because it, it was not like we were. Intimate. Intimate. It's so many people around. I'm sorry. Yes. I am not somebody that you paint naked or something. Yeah. So I feel just as awkward I know. with other people looking and at me. I, I, and I remember one girl was trying to like really get into it and the other girl was a little awkward. And I was, I was awkward both times. Mm -hmm. You know, even when the girl had her breasts in my face, I was awkward. I was like, what am I going to do? Oh, should I kiss the breast or not? <laughs> so I get into the character, you know what I mean? So I was like, all right, I'm acting. <laughs> Fucking, I'm acting. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, you know, just cut around that. Please cut around that. You can. And you know what's funny? When we say it's just acting, we literally mean that. Like, people don't know the, the possibilities of not just the... The the moral shit that you'll go through, yeah. But the legal shit that you'll go through, sure. If you touch inappropriately, your you know co-star, so male now, or woman. Now forget you know, with me too and all this stuff. You know, or, you, you, sales, you I think them. they kill you. Yeah, I, I think they kill you. If I'm right, I'm pretty sure they <laughs> fucking kill you. It's like they will kill you. If you, we have ground rules in Hollywood. I know Hollywood is painted to be reckless, and that's because that is the lifestyle that we're supposed to paint. You right, know what I'm saying right. for you guys? Well, it's listen, it is make-believe. It is yeah. art. It is, you know, you're, you're trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, there are people that have made movies and have fallen in love, and, you know, those things happen. But they're not, like... Common. Common. Most of us you know are single mean? and hurt. Yeah. Okay? It's not like Steve McQueen and Ali McGraw. I'm going way back. But, you know, there are some people that, you know... Old stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, he, so, he, so he's a DJ and, so he's, a roller a DJ? He, and yeah. he's a roller skater. And you are a DJ. Yeah. And, you, and, and now, and you're a big roller skater too, right? One I see the, you out there roller skating your ass off. I'm a, uh, you're good. I'm all right. You know, uh, how long are you doing that? I've been skating. My first time getting punched in the eye was at a skating rink by one of my cousins. You got punched in the eye? Right in my motherfucking eye. Wow. Yeah, it hurt. For what? Because he thought I was trying to trip his skate right. I, I literally wasn't. I was just really bad at skating. That's your cousin? Yeah, punched the shit out of me. And so <laughs> I'm up here like on the wall and, Fuck. and some of my There's family. There's one and some cousin of my... that punches you out. Yeah, right? I, uh, I fought. One of my cousins chased me with a brick when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. and I ran for my life. I fought three of my cousins in my lifetime. But he punched you like you didn't see it coming? or No, I, no, he grabbed. So he was while, while we were rolling, I was right behind him, in right? In Florida or out here? I, in Florida. He grabbed my skate. It was in the air. And he just chose to choose the right eye to fuck my shit up. First cousin? And, 
Nah, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, punched me dead in my shit, and I was like, Damn. oh, man, that's crazy. What happened? What I mean? cried like a bitch. I didn't, yeah. I didn't yeah. stand up. Was he care. older? Yeah. Big guy? Way bigger than me. See, uh, I, I I just got this tall, like, over the last two, three years, right? Yeah, you're pretty tall. Like, I just got this tall type yeah. shit. And so I was used to being the little one, you know what I'm saying, to get, you know, uh, beat up by family members and shit like that. Like, Broderick and Steven, my older brothers, they used to hold me down and tickle my feet until I cried. Right. And it was the worst shit ever. And then me and Broderick got into this fight in our living room. I threw so a who's that book. cousin that punched you? You ever get any... Uh... And he, and he, get any, you know. Nah, I just let it. I let it sit where it was. I wasn't the type of confrontation type of young man at the time. I didn't want a, a second ass whooping, so I just chill, you know. Um, but now it's You're like more of a happy spirit. You don't seem like that yeah, type. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy as shit. You know, I'll fuck some shit up if you if you don't do me wrong. Okay, I will fuck you up. But I'm happy. I see no no reason for violence. I right. see no reason for right. this extra shit. Because I would rather smile, smoke a blunt, sit the fuck down. Have you roller skated in the movie yet or series yet? Well, we did. I did a little bit in White Boy Rick. I oh, didn't get to show White out Bo in right. White Boy Rick, yeah. but I got to roll a little bit. Um, we you did were like good a in good. that. You were good in White Boy Rick. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. trying. Yeah. Uh, but didn't love the movie, but I loved seeing you. Yeah. You know? I try. Um, now, uh, what are you doing now? You're doing a show now up in Canada? Uh, yeah, we uh, just filmed the pilot for Dark Cargo up there. Um, it was cold What's as that? shit in Calgary. Uh, Dark Cargo is a a pilot about this young man who um, is kind of caught in just a bad situation when he's moving drugs, you know? Okay. That's just it. And then I play this kid, uh, Anthony, who... Um, oh, shit. I play this kid, Anthony. That was such a great save. You see that? <laughs> in the fucking moment. <laughs> Always in the moment. With RJ. It was, it was, um, <laughs> it was cool because I play a serial killer in this, you know, and so everything that everybody knows of RJ in Hollywood, I'm always like a best friend, uh, moral compass. I'm the good guy, I'm the nerd, you know. Comic relief. Yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, because you're funny. Because it's so fucking good too. Yeah, like yeah. I love doing that type of stuff. But like this one is kind of is is different. For me, I'm not used to being the antagonist. I'm not used to being You're the crazy. You're not used to being that. Yeah. Honest, and it is different. Yeah, so yeah. it's making me flex a, a, a different muscle, muscle that I never yeah. had, right? Yeah. So it's like Anthony, so like beautifully, like, hey, how you doing? Like more you Boy Scout ass. Maybe grounded in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come but, at it from but a different But the thing way. is, they they wanted it to where he was very poshly presented, to where you wouldn't question if he was like, hey, do you want me to take your kids to the park? And you'd be like, yes, right? But he only wants to get your kids out of the house so he can murder you and your, you know, your family, whoever else isn't a kid. He'll skin them with his hands. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nine times out of ten, chop it up and serve it to the kids that come back home. Okay. Like that's Anthony. He's a little creep, but I love him. You know, like yeah, I'm excited yeah. to play this part right well, that's here. That's cool. Who's who? Are you doing that? Who are you doing that for? Um, uh, it's a net, uh, not Netflix, YouTube. YouTube. And, um, YouTube Red. And Chris doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's it's cool. What's like, the name of that? Dark Cargo. Dark Cargo. And so it's not pilot? because I'm black and I'm right. a, a hitchhiker. Yeah. It's actually like... <laughs> <laughs> Did they pick it up yet? Do you know or no? You don't no, know No, I yet. don't know yet. You don't Hopefully, know yet. though, because that it, it's a really good, great, like, texture of the show when I seen um, how, how it was being shot. Um, Lodge, who is our director for the pilot, he has a really great, like aesthetic look like his mind is fucking crazy with the shots that he shoots like the tone that he takes he actually it, 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 he has a picture for it right right but the story itself is the thing that keeps me interested mm -hmm. because it's like you know you don't know where these 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 things are gonna go like yeah like damn right like, you don't the, know where it's going yeah like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, weird yeah. it's it's almost you how know are you how with good? reading scripts you like to read scripts or do you have a hard time getting through them or I mean, scripts are hard sometimes, you know. They are. They, they, some go faster than mm -hmm. others. Some, you know, you just go, ah, oh, this is fun. I want to. I hate the ones that that take forty two pages for you to get into, to get and into it's an it, eight page long. script. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know, too long. It's like, come you kind of know after 10, yeah. 20 pages, like, all right, I either don't right. want to play in this shit. Yeah, I do. yeah, or I'm getting through it because I gotta get through it. But... Yeah, yeah. It's like I read every I read every script from front to back because I don't do that whole shit. People put their time into, you know, writing. That's, so it's that's like, good, yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't want nobody to watch half of my movie and be like, oh, it ain't shit. You know, like, right. all right, cool. That's a respect thing. But it is a little bit like, it's a little bit better when it's actually good shit. 
you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> when it's good shit. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And, it, and, and you'll find it's hard to find good stuff because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's like, God, you know, when you open it, you always want to be excited. Yeah. Sometimes you're like surprised and you're like, wow, this is actually good. Yeah, like, <laughs> you oh. Know? You know, you read a lot of stuff that's like, nah, so, so. It's, you know, it's even hard to write crappy stuff. Yeah. Then if you've written stuff, you know, like I've co-written things and you know like, how hard it is to write a script. So when you get something good, you're like, oh, wow, this guy has a voice. Yeah. The writer has a good... This shit actually bangs. Yeah, this bangs, man. The characters bang or the story bangs. That's when I read like uh, Jesse Andrews. Like I didn't even know how to read a script when I first booked Me and Earl. But the reason that I, I wanted to do Me and Earl so bad, right, was because it seemed so goddamn much like me. Like, and not me as in RJ, but I was a teenager. In this paper, like, it looked like it was written by a teenager, toned by a teenager, right. expressed by a teenager, you know, and, and then I see Jesse and it's like, holy shit, you're nowhere near a teenager. Oh, that means you're a genius. Yeah. You know? That's and so now yeah. it's like, even, even his books, he's, he's released a few books after me and Earl and the Dying Girl, and his books are even intriguing, you know? When you fucking open up the index, you want to know exactly what's about to pop off in this chapter, that chapter, this chapter. If it's fiction, nonfiction, if it's just a bi you know, a biography or this and that, like I know that Jesse will have something that's just straight heat, you know. Like right. and, and he's he's definitely a, a writer that I I wanna catch one of his next films or something in Hollywood. Like I've been waiting to hear that from my team. Like, oh, Jesse's doing this or like Alfonso's yeah. doing this. Could like, they get you in on it or could you, yeah. Yeah, because the, the, yeah. the people that I made me and Earl with, they kind of um, made like a blueprint of what I I want or what I look what for when like it comes to, to a set. Yeah, yeah, like not even just uh, project wise and how the outcome is, right? But the way that they- Well, well maybe one day you'll, you'll write or you'll write with somebody. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited about me in my like 30s. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe. Because writing late 20s. is exciting. Because in a way, like when it's hard, but when you can get your voice on the page and you can get your vision out there, you know. And then the 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 the, tr the trick is, how do I execute it? You know, as yeah, much as you yeah. get it on the page and you're like, yeah, it's great. But now, how do we make it come to? Because then sometimes you need somebody to help you make that vision. Yeah. That's what that's what me and yeah. my me and my friend Woody. So Woody McClain, he plays Bobby Brown, right, in the new uh, Bobby Brown movie, right. And he's from Jacksonville, Florida, also. That's oh. like that's like he's my brother, though. Like that's right. not just a friend that I met out here. Like we used to dance together and shit in Jacksonville, like his school and our school, like you got dance crew and like yeah, we were always together in the that was you know, your, that was that, your hood, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how I met yeah, yeah. big big homie Woody was through the dance community. You know what I'm saying? And then when we seen each other, um, just like prospering man like i'd be so fucking proud every time he got something to drop rather it's a, a thing for his social media content or if it's a thing for him actually doing you know hollywood big work right and it's because he has no it, it, it's not no handout thing like woody didn't have handouts and you know oh i have this right but he just got in and did this shit like he wanted some different shit and he took it right and that's the thing like right now he's uh, writing something with my friend Ronnie, and they're trying to put it together, and the 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 message of it is so. Mm, and mm -hmm. then the way she wrote it is, mm, she sent it to me in my email, and I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, RJ, you got to text it back. But I'm so horrible at like, communicating when it comes to texting and this and that because yeah. I be going like, I know, I know. You're an actor, so you get yeah, it. Like, yeah. And some people don't. They, oh, nobody's ever that busy. Everybody's not an actor. If you have any idea how our phones look, we don't know. They might be in this book bag in this transpo van for right. two days right. because we nobody knows. Like I can actually say I don't apologize. They don't understand a, yeah. a day in the life of an actor. Or yeah, a and it's like life. if we switch yeah, shoes. Like sometimes they might say, like, when you're gonna be done. Yeah. You know, like and you're like, and like you might be in a relationship and the girl's like, yeah, she's new in your life, and you're like, well, what do you do? I'm an actor. Uh, when are you gonna be finished? I'm like, nah, I don't know. And then that that yeah. becomes a whole and nother. Like, well, what, what do you mean, you, mean don't you don't know? I'm telling you, I don't know. Literally, I'm telling you the truth. I'm <laughs> done when I'm done, lady. And if you can't you know? handle that, you yeah. need to go on if and go. If you can't, 
then you're not for me. Look, Walmart employees stay right. open. <laughs> um, <laughs> McDonald's, they they fire yeah. their employees yeah. if they get some nine to five. Yeah, like nine to do that. But me, yeah. I'm 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 a mogul, right? That's right. I'm trying to build something so that I'm, my I'm, kids can eat off of, my family exactly. can eat you off got, of. Like you can't have that distraction. Yeah, like you're get like, the fuck I'm out of here. I'm working right now, right fucking now. I'm working. Mm -hmm. This is hard shit to do make believe. Mm -hmm. don't Especially, oh my yes, fucking gosh. Don't I don't even think people get up. that though. No, but they don't understand right. that. That's crazy. It's not like a nine to five job. You nah. can't fuck with me now. People don't get the arts, man. No, they, they don't. don't understand they don't. that. That's why like sometimes like I heard Quentin Tarantino makes everybody take their cell phones and put them like in a fucking bag. And he's smart mm -hmm. because we're all guilty of this shit today. Yeah. We're always like, you know. And yeah. you know, that could fuck you up. Somebody could give me a Yankee score. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's Don't give me the mean. score now. I'm trying to do a C. Don't tell me they're losing. Yeah. Are you fucking nuts? You know what I mean? No, that's that's how it so be. That's, that's why I, I cut my shit off when I'm on set a lot. Like Beautiful. and some people baseball. don't get it. Like, like baseball? Hmm? You like baseball? I'm a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, but that's, that's because right. that was the yeah. first game I ever yeah, went that, to. Put that hat on. Um that's the We Are Family hat, man. Nikki, you got a really lot of hair now, son. Like, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> it's, it's Bro, hey, what's your regimen? How many times you wash in a week, son? <laughs> huh? Enough. Right, I'm with that. <laughs> he got a lot of fucking hair, and it tickles the shit out of me. I really, this hair, <laughs> he's always trying to hug me and all this shit. <laughs> I don't want to hug him because I don't like the hair. It's tickling me. Not a woman's hair. A woman's hair, I can just push it off. Wait, but it's the same texture. I know, but it's, a man having that kind women, of hair. Women, women love the braided, they, too. Yeah. You women know. love the, look at the flow. I can take him outside mm. right now and be like, excuse me, ma'am, do you think he has pretty hair? Yeah. It's beautiful. You, you like don't it? touch it first. I mean, it looks good on him. I remember I remember when your hair was shorter yeah. when we first met. Yeah. I remember when it was I shorter. I really like that. I forgot what he looked like. I met when he, I met him when he was like yeah. 17, mm -hmm. 16, yeah, I think 17. Yeah, he told me about you and all this stuff. And then, I you know. You met him briefly. I, yeah. We, yeah. we were just in that improv class, and it was like. I think I did meet him. It was fun. And I liked I liked his energy. Like right off the bat, and then you have come over the house, and we've seen some of your work. I just, I just think you know you're you got a lot of you know the sky's the limit for you, man. Thank you, Paul. You know what I mean, you get the uh, you got charisma, you got talent, you're funny, and you know you just and you're smart, and um, just keep it up, my man. Well, yeah, man. Baby, you this was what? good, man. I ain't gonna let you All down. Right, thanks for breaking bread. You kicked ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I, literally bread. It's actually bread on the table. Yeah, man. You know, it's, it's right. actually bread on the table. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, baby. You killed it, baby.